Good morning, house lovers. Another fabulous winter's day in Melbourne. Let's go inside and talk fireplaces. And what a week it's been. Um, pandemic central still, and then the murder of George Floyd in the States and the huge response to that. I don't know about you, but it's made me feel quite anxious and a little helpless and um, figuring out how I can do something. And here I am in my privileged bubble. Always a good rule of thumb though, is to think global but act local. And I found that uh, GQ Australia had put together a list of 12 Aboriginal justice organisations that you could donate to. I'll put the link down below if you're in Australia or if you're interested in Australian social justice issues. I found doing something positive and constructive to help with the ongoing legal recognition of injustice was something that I could do. So there we are. And now, back to more Bonacordi things. Let's talk fireplaces. This week, what I've been doing is taking off all the radiators in the whole house. Here you can see some of my cunning radiator removal and even more cunning mantelpiece removal. It wasn't that difficult. Once I figured out how to uh, get all the radiators off, which was quite simply unbolt them and then hack off the copper piping, which has been fun, has it? No, it's not, but it's satisfying because I know copper is very recyclable. Take them out into the courtyard to drain all the water out. They weighed a ton, but c'est la vie. I then realized that most of the mantelpieces were holding in place the backboards that were blocking up the fireplace aperture, so I had to take off the mantelpieces to get those backboards off, and they then revealed mostly um, cast iron inserts. And the first one I did was this one. I wasn't really expecting to find that much behind any of these mantelpieces, but I have to say that in every room just about, there's been some little clue to some of the past residents. And some of them are really quite poignant. Let's go into George's room. His mantelpiece, as you can see, was, is a uh, beautiful colonial cedar. So again, I took off the, the radiator and the board that was filling in the aperture. Now this would have been probably a rear bedroom and as you can see, there was no cast iron insert. Part of the puzzle was figuring out how the mantelpieces are attached. There are pieces of timber set into the brickwork and the mantelpieces are actually nailed through into those wooden plugs. I'll show you downstairs because it's easier to see. These are the wooden plugs I was telling you about that are inset into the masonry walls and it was to these that the timber mantelpieces were nailed. But when I wrenched this one off, just behind the pillar on the right, this card fell out. Can you see that? And it says, Christmas, greetings to the absent one. A greeting from all your friends at home at happy Christmas tide. May fortune follow where'er you roam and joy be at your side. And the back, says to dear Hector with love and best wishes from Vera, Christmas 1912. So Hector received this card here, put it against the mantelpiece. It slipped behind where it has remained for 108 years, which I think is extraordinary. Now 1912, two years later, the First World War breaks out. Does Hector sign up? Is he conscripted? Does he go and fight? Does he survive? And then in 1918, 1919, the flu pandemic. Did Hector, did Vera survive that? Were they brother and sister? Were they lovers? Who knows? But how poignant is that? So this will join the household Wunderkammer of strange and wonderful treasures that we found whilst renovating Bonacord House. I think from now on, we might have to refer to this as George and Hector's room. I love the name Hector. Now this used to be Matty's bathware emporium, but everything has gone. Uh, the shower screens went, all the lavs, all the sinks. The last thing as you can see is the enamel shower basin and someone has promised to pick it up this weekend. So that means a hundred percent success rate. All the carpets, everything. Brilliant, but that's not the story today. The story today is that this room had the most wonderful treasures behind the mantelpiece. 
Like the others, a bit of a palaver to remove the mantelpiece, as you can see. And again, this room at the front has got a cast iron insert. Um, and they actually, they just lean against the wall. And it was the mantelpiece that kept them in place. But this room had the most things behind the mantelpiece. And innumerable beer coasters. So, uh, well, in fact, these are whiskey. So someone in this room obviously liked to tipple. And I wonder if it's the owner of this St. Vincent's Hospital card, whose name was George Watts. Now, this is a different George from upstairs. And George Watts lived here, these dates are 1971. So he was early 70s. And it does say on this, please keep this book clean and notify the hospital at once of any change of address. If lost, we'll find a please return to St. Vincent's Hospital. So I wonder if I should. There is this Vitabritz card, and these cards were produced in the 1960s. Closing the Miles, one of the four volumes in the Vitabritz Talking Library of Australian History. So someone was eating their Vitabritz in the morning. A rent slip. So we know what people were paying in 2004. $240 a fortnight. And the receipt is written phonetically. Fort is spelt F-O-R-T-E-E. -E. A Swatch watch, which I think still works. So I might put a battery in it and give it to one of my godchildren. <laughs> and lastly, but most thrillingly, two postcards addressed to the same man. Ciccio lo presti. Now these cards are dated um, May 1975 and this one is July 1975. So someone had gone to Italy and then Singapore and sent postcards, but not to this address. The address is actually 280 Ligon Street, Carlton, which is just up the road and around the corner. It's about a seven minute walk. So this guy, Ciccio Lopresti, was working at that place and it was called L'Alba Coffee Lounge. So in Melbourne, there was a great tradition of Italian coffee lounges. And in fact, I think it was in Melbourne in the 50s that the first espresso machine arrived in this country. So Carlton has a huge tradition of Italian restaurants and Italian residents. But here's where it gets even weirder. So I googled 280 Ligon Street to see if the cafe was still there. It's not but I saw the building facade and it's uh, a Victorian two-story uh, shop front on a corner of a laneway and it had been burnt out at some point in the last few years. So the upper story was completely gutted and a bit of the wall had fallen in. Here is the weird thing though, that before we bought Bon Accord, the good doctor and I went to go and have a look at that place because it was for sale. And we thought that as it had been gutted in terms of renovation and working with the council, it might be an easier proposition. In the end, the idea of having uh, a commercial tenancy below us wasn't that attractive. So we then came and found Bon Accord. But how weird. So Ciccio, who lived in this room, used to work at that place that we nearly bought. There we are, house lovers. Mantelpiece removal 101. I have had fun wrestling with mantelpieces and fires. All I have to do now is clean off the mantelpieces themselves, remove the iron inserts and find new homes for those, which I'm sure I can. Thank you for watching. You know you want to hit like and you know you want to subscribe and leave a message. And I will see you next week.